Tuesday, written by Bellamont, read by the Viridian Ghost. This is part two of the Personality Swap AU, and the summary is, After Midoriya's successful attempt of impersonating Bakugo for an entirety of Monday, Aizawa decides that the boy will impersonate him on Tuesday. Or... You guys asked about Tuesday, so here you go. Featuring some Dad's Owl for the soul. Let's get into it. If Monday was amusing for Aizawa, Tuesday was downright hilarious in the hero's eyes. It started off perfectly, and Aizawa had to hide his smirk when Midoriya walks into class seconds before the bell. A mug of coffee in hand, and a spare capture weapon around his neck, which... Aizawa didn't even give to him. How did Midoriya get that? And a familiar, tired expression wore on his face. Midoriya even had the dark rings under his eyes, and Aizawa honestly cannot tell if it's makeup or actual eye bags that the boy suddenly gained. The silence that had just fallen over the class is replaced with a multitude of questions the moment Midoriya enters the room. The rest of 1A trying to understand this change of events. Midoriya glares at the class, and Aizawa almost chokes, because Midoriya's eyes seem to glint and darken despite the boy not having a quirk to do that. Silence or you're out, Midoriya says, and the room falls quiet. Well, except for one student. Why do you get to dress up again? Mineta Mineta asks, and Midoriya sighs and points points to the door. Get out, Midoriya says. You're expelled. The class devolves into pandemonium once again. Aizawa decides that he's completely okay with his decision. Maybe next time they'll listen to my goddamn lecture, Aizawa thinks, and he chuckles. Only one green student actually catches it. And that's quite all right. That is not quite all right, however, is that the class has yet to settle down. Aizawa glares at his students, opening his mouth to chide them, but it seems that his student is already prepared. Quiet down, Midoriya says. If I have to remind you one more time, I'll make you start writing essays on why the si- why silence is a virtue in the wor- world of heroics. The class finally falls silent, and then a single shaking hand ra- raises. Aizawa raises an eyebrow, but calls on them anyway. Mineta. Am I actually expelled? Mineta asks shakily, and Aizawa lets one of his practically patented smiles grow on his face. Are you questioning your teacher's decision? Aizawa asks. And just like that, Mineta is racing out of the room, tears forming in his eyes. Aizawa watches the boy flee and then clears his throat. If that is all, Aizawa says, turning to the chalkboard. Only to see that Midoriya is already writing on the board, the words, the point of personas and aesthetics, written in his usual lazy scrawl. Aizawa's lazy scrawl. Not Midoriya's signature scribbling. Aizawa wonders if Midoriya wrote yesterday's note in Bakugo's handwriting style instead of his own. He He decides that he can ask later. Turning to face the class, Midoriya begins to speak. As you learned yesterday, having a persona can be tricky. A single sentence can cause you to stumble, breaking your entire act in seconds. For many of you, it's clear that personas aren't easy to maintain. However, there are multiple perks of having one. This part of what we're, this is part of what we'll be discussing. Along with that, we need to talk about aesthetics. Having a flashy costume is fine for some and is part of the glamour of being a daylight hero. But fashion can override functionality, and it's important to make sure that you don't look so overdone that it negates your ability to be a hero. Midoriya picks up Aizawa's phone, tapping the passcode without even thinking and clicking on the screen, immediately projecting a hologram onto the board. You will have 15 minutes to go over your own image, Think about the pros and cons of having a persona and what it would grant you. 
along with any flaws in your costume that can be can decrease your performance as a proper hero. Begin. The class is frozen for a moment, and then they all begin to write down notes, some scribble, scribbling furiously, while others struggle to start. Aizawa, for his part, just watches as Midoriya looks over the, over the room, sighs, then climbs into a yellow sleeping bag. The boy falls asleep instantly, dropping to the floor. And Aizawa can't help but stare. That sleeping bag ha hadn't been there a moment ago. And more importantly, how did Midoriya know his password? Or his lesson plans? Aizawa chalks up to being a Midoriya thing, and promptly falls asleep in his own sleeping bag. He's got 13 minutes of free nap time, and he'll take what he can get. Yamuna decides he might just cry. When he walks into 1A's classroom, only to find a certain gray-paired student missing, and another resting in the corner, wrapped in a familiar sleeping bag, and apparently asleep. What the fuck? Yamada munders, mumbo, murmurs under his breath, in English, of course, because he has standards. Then louder. Hey, listeners, mind telling me what's going on? Ida steps up to his duty as class representative, standing up and explaining that, We have two Aizawas for the day. Aizawa is sticking around for all of our lessons. He points to Midoriya as he speaks, and Yamura watches as Midoriya opens one eye and glares at his peers. Glares. What has Shota done to the poor listener? Yamura wonders. But he doesn't voice that question, instead choosing to ask, All right, and where's the tiny listener? I expelled that brat, Midoriya mutters, shifting into an upright position. If that's all, you should be starting the lesson, Zashi. I'm stuck supervising these hellspawn for the day. We might as well be productive. Yamuna blinks at Stoon's words, unable to decide which part deserves the freakout going on inside his head. Is it the expulsion? The ease of which Midoriya called him Zashi, despite the, despite taking the whole month to switch to President Mike, to Yamada-sensei? The fact that he called his classmates Hellspawn? Yes. The answer is yes. All three of them deserve the freak out. Yamada excuses himself from the room, shutting the door behind him carefully. A loud scream can be heard throughout UA and nobody bats an eye. Not after yesterday. Midoriya doesn't show up for lunch, so his friends decide that decide to find him. Todoroki, Ida, Uraraka, and Shinso head down to 1A. The first three are concerned that their friend is skipping lunch, because he doesn't know he doesn't know where to sit. Shinso just wants to see what made his homeroom teacher look so petrified. Ida opens the door to the classroom, all four sees up upon entering, suddenly staring at the scene before them. Aizawa stares back, a jelly pouch half raised to his mouth, cocooned in a sleeping bag, Midoriya lays beside him, a mere image of the man, an empty pouch lays beside the boy's head, in the same exact flavor. Half of the greenette, greenette's face is covered by the capture weapon, weapon making the eye bags all the more prominent. Well, I can see the resemblance, Shinso admits, causing Todoroki's eyes to widen. I've been looking in the wrong place all along, Todoroki whispers, looking as, he, as, if, as if he's just found the most important and revelation of his entire life. Aren't you supposed to be eating right now? Aizawa asks, and Ida jumps into an explanation. We are. We just... We were worried for Midoriya. We didn't know if he had eaten, but it's clear that he has, so... I don't really care, Aizawa admits. Go back to lunch. Without another word, Aizawa closes his eyes, falling asleep immediately. Huh, Uraka says. And just like that, Aizawa and Midoriya are left to their naps. All Might decides quite a few things on Tuesday. First is as follows. All Might does not like the personality swap assignments that Aizawa had recently assigned to his students, and he especially does not like that his successor has been singled out to continue impersonating others. 
It just feels wrong, on a fundamental level, to see his bright-eyed and cheery boy so, so not bright and cheery. No one can blame All Might for his loss of words. He's still reeling from Midoriya's scathing remarks from yesterday's swap. And now, today, with Midoriya acting like his co-worker? All Might decides that he is more afraid of Midoriya acting as Aizawa than he is of Aizawa himself. Because Midoriya is not made to be giving such harsh glares and cold comments, and yet he's still doing exactly that. You know, I thought that teaching book was supposed to teach you something, Midoriya remarks, as All Might sends other students off to do their activities. Midoriya had refused to join in on the basis that they only had 18 students, and All Might was too afraid to ask where Mineta had gone at this point. But it seems that you're as incompetent as ever. My boy, All Might says instinctively, and Midoriya sighs. The problem child is on house arrest again. Midoriya turns a sharp eye on All Might, and here the retired hero could almost swear that the boy is using erasure, because his eyes seem almost red as he says, If you don't behave, you will be too. Yeah, All Might decides he does not like seeing Midoriya as a mini Aizawa. He prefers the hero fanboy, thank you very much. Overall, the day is a success in Midoriya's eyes. While obtaining the necessary props for the day had been a bit of a hassle, he had, after all, had to snatch the key from Aizawa to Aizawa Sensei's room off of Yamada Sensei and return it without getting noticed. It was definitely worth the effort to have, a, have the capture weapon, lesson plans, and sleeping bag. And thanks to Midoriya remembering his teacher's password after seeing the men put it in during their fourth week of school, Midoriya thinks he did pretty well for the day. And Aizawa Sensei must think so, too. Midoriya thinks, because Aizawa, Aizawa asks him yet again to stay at the end of the day. Midoriya, Aizawa says as the bell rings, for the second day in a row. Stay after, again, will you? Midoriya agrees, as the day continues as it should. Okay, that was Tuesday, uh, written by Bellamont and read by the Viridian Ghost. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I'll, I'll be continuing this series for as long as I can, honestly, even though there's quite a few in this uh, series. It's going to be a, quite a challenge, but I feel like I can do it. I'm also going to be posting some other fanfics coming up. Hope you guys enjoy these. And I'll see you next time. This is the Viridian Ghost, signing off. See ya.